Please welcome for the first of three visits today, Vicki Say Henderson. Thank you. So um, I want to start with this question. Do you remember the time when you were four, five, or six years old and someone came to the door and knocked about your age and said, hey, you want to play? And your reaction was, yeah. Yeah, and it was just, you know, bye, mom, I'm out, and off you go. Well, something happens as we age, and when those people come to our doors and say, hey, you want to play, our adult reaction is, whoa, hey now, play what? <laughs> Suddenly we have to categorize things, right? So today, my time with you is to bring us back to that four, five, and six-year-old place where we just naturally knew how to create and collaborate with another person. Um, so we're going to do that through improvisational acting technique. Um, some people have asked me many times, well, what exactly is improv? I mean, I hear this all the time, but what is it? Most people would say it's acting without a script. Other people might say it's active storytelling. I like to call it the art of possibility. I started doing improv in college my senior year. It was awful. We thought we knew what we were doing. It was student-led. We'd all gone to some conference in my senior year and said, ooh, this looks fun and easy. Let's go do it. So we had a good time with it. But I started seriously studying improv in Orlando, Florida, when I was training at a film studio there called KVG Studios. And a teacher named Ricky Mann um, uh, brought me into improv kicking and screaming. And, and I did it. Um, I soon became a better actor because of it, and I soon realized that many vocations could use this as a means of learning other things. So that's why I call it the art of possibility. It helps us birth lots of things. But here's the really good news. There are three fundamental rules and tools of improv play that are fundamental to everything that we do with another person, uh, being a better person spouse, being a better lab partner, being a better son or daughter, best friend, what have you. So we're going to play around with those today. Um, I think the person who put these in the best order for me in my training was a man named Dan Diggles, who wrote a book called Improv for Actors, and it became pretty much the cornerstone for how I teach it to my students. So what are those rules and tools? They are make your partner look good and feel insanely smart. Number two, train your brain to go with your gut. And number three, yes and, accept and build on top of. So we're gonna play around with some of these today. We're gonna start with make your partner look good and feel insanely smart. Uh, I am the director of education at Trust Us Theater in the Vista of Columbia. And thank you, yay, trust us nation. Great, um, so there we have this great uh, class series called Night Owl Improv. It's um, every other Tuesday night from eight to 10. And interestingly enough, only about a quarter of the students that come to this class are actors. We have Columbia City firefighters coming, we have attorneys. Uh, we have magazine editors, you name it. It's wonderful to see all these people coming out and learning new things with us. Um, but we did an experiment one night where we determined the creative love language of our partners. And after we learned them, we put them into practice. And something magical happened. People started becoming more free and relaxed when they knew there was a caretaker of their creativity there who was not going to do anything to let them look stupid. Suddenly, they were doing things that were risky, and it was all because they felt safe. There was a trust factor there. So we're going to play around with that. But before we do, I've asked Katie Fox to join me on stage to model what we're going to do first. So Katie, would you come on out here? Yes, Katie Fox. Thank you, Katie. Okay, 
So the first thing we're going to do is simply look at each other, but I want to show you how I want you to look at each other. We're going to team up with a partner, and it should be somebody that's standing right next to you or sitting right next to you. I'm going to ask in a moment that you guys will stand up and face one another. And because of the space where you are, you might actually have to be kind of like this. And uh, if you can get a little further back, please do. But you just simply <laughs> want to stand, you know, about this far away from them. And you want to make 20 seconds of steady, friendly, unbroken, nonverbal eye contact with this person. You're getting uncomfortable right now, aren't you? All right. All right. So that's what I want. Thank you, Katie. And that's what I would like for you guys to do. And then we'll go to the next step after that. So can we take about 15 seconds to figure out who our partners are and simply stand across from them? we want to do so does everybody have a partner everybody have a partner okay great so oh is this the music cue for later is this the music cue for later oh thanks no, Chris this is um, silence. <clears throat> that's coming up next <laughs> um, raise your hand if you have a partner uh, raise your hand if you don't Oh, do we still have a few more people that don't? Okay, good. So, uh, 20 seconds, I will count for you. Steady, friendly, unbroken, nonverbal eye contact. You know, it's that friendly kind of eye contact, not the kind I'm going to stalk you later. <laughs> <laughs> right? All right, here we go. 20 seconds begins right now. and time. <laughs> Good job. Okay. So, if you found that to be a little easier than you thought it was going to be, give me one of these. All right. If you found it to be a little more difficult than you thought it was going to be, give me one of these. Okay, great. There's a reason. There's a reason for this. How many people look at people in elevators? Yeah? Okay. You are the bold few. <laughs> and you all happen to be here right now. <laughs> okay? So there's a reason. Eyes are intimate. Um, there's something about looking at people's eyes and in close proximity to them that makes us a little, oh, a little uncomfortable. So here's the, here's the thing. If two people stand like this, squared off, for more than about 10 seconds without speaking or moving, we are all wired to believe that one of two things are about to happen. They're going to fight or they're going to kiss. <laughs> so I'm going to do this with Katie, and I want you to be careful to watch because you're going to do the same thing. Hey, Katie, I don't want to fight you, and I don't want to kiss you either. And she's going to say the same thing to me. Hey, Vicki, I don't want to fight you, and I don't want to kiss you. Got that out of the way. So we're good. Do the same with your partner. <laughs> All right. Now, if you would, tell your partner you have permission to look at me. You have permission to look at me. You have permission to look at me. All right. Awesome. <clears throat> so, you now have permission to look at your partner. Now you need a mission. You need a reason for looking at this person. So, let's go back to that elevator analogy for a second. 
If we all worked in the same 17-story office building and the boss of our company said, I have a $20,000 credit card free to the employee who can accurately tell me the eye color of every other employee, we'd be doing this in the elevator all day long. <laughs> we just needed a reason. So I want to give you a reason to look at your partner. What I'd like you to do for the same amount of time that you stared at them, I'd like for you to memorize their appearance from head to toe. How are they arranged today? Because in a moment, they're going to change something about themselves, and you're helping yourself out by studying how they look right now. So on the count of three, let's take 20 nonverbal seconds to memorize our partner's appearance. Ready? One, two, three, go. Okay, friends. Now we're going to turn our back, and Katie and I are going to turn our backs on one another. You want to be sure you can't see them back there. We want to make the person back here look really good and feel insanely smart. And the way we're going to do that is to make a really bold change. I could roll up my sleeve, or I can take my boot off and put it on my head. <laughs> That's the bold kind of choice we're talking about. So you have 30 seconds to make three bold changes to yourself. And I'll let you know when time's up. Ready? Begin. <laughs> All right, we've got about 10 seconds left. Some of you are going to feel really smart in a moment. There's some really good changes happening out there. All right. We are going to turn around, and when we do, we're going to have our partner see if they can guess within five seconds what our three choices are. Gang, are you ready? All right, here we go. Turn around and guess. <laughs> <laughs> Awesome. All right, the shoe. Is it going too far? Like, truly, no, this is going perfect. <laughs> you took the shoe off, you put that one there, and you put that there. And you took your boot off and put it over your Awesome. Awesome. Now. Don't go back to your other appearance. Don't go back to your original appearance. quick look around the room. <laughs> Notice some of the changes happening. If you had a partner that made you feel really smart just now, that deserves a thank you, a very sincere one. So say thank you. Thank, thank you, Vicki. All right. <laughs> I don't want to keep you here for one more second. All right, go back to your original appearance if you haven't already. I feel like I should turn my back again. <laughs> So, making your partner look good and feel smart is all about creating a sense of safety and trust for them. If Katie and I hooked a wire up to each side of the room and it were four inches off the floor and we got on it and someone told us to jump, we would probably jump pretty high because we know if we fall off, we just put a foot down. However, if that same wire were 40 feet in the air, we went up a ladder and got on that wire, and someone said, bounce and jump, we would not jump very high. Why? Because we don't feel safe there. So uh, improv is a lot more juicy when we feel safe and make riskier choices. So that's what that was all about. Thank you. And I'm going to have Katie do one more thing with me. You can have a seat now and watch this. <laughs> we got one last thing to do. 
This is called Dance Off. <laughs> but yeah, I like this crowd already. <laughs> um, it sounds like a competition, but it isn't. And what's going to happen is um, you're each going to be a partner A and a partner B. Um, Katie will be partner A, and I will be partner B. There's going to be some really awesome music playing in just a moment. It's a, a track called Nobody's Home by Reggie Sullivan. Uh, Reggie, are you out here today? Somewhere? Yeah, Reggie. Thank you. Where are you? Anyway, yes, Reggie's um, going to have some music playing for us here in a minute. And when we hear that music begin, Katie, because she's partner A, is going to lead some movement. Uh, Katie, just give me anything repetitive that I can do to copy you. Okay, great. <laughs> All right, great. So Katie and I, I could do this and make my partner look good. But if I really want to make her look good, if I really want to take the heat off Katie right now, I'm going to do it <laughs> twice as big as her. And I'm really going to commit. She's awesome. Give her a little bit. Yeah. <laughs> now, then there's going to be a bell ring. When you hear the bell ring, that means switch leadership. It now means I become the leader and Katie becomes the follower. But we know that the follower overcommits and gives extra zeal and gusto to the choices that the other person is making. So if I were doing this. <laughs> yes, ma'am. Yes. <laughs> So, uh, to finish up our first round of some improv play, let's do a little dance-off with that partner that you were just eyeballing yeah. a minute ago. Now Everybody it's your stand turn. up. <laughs> All right. Do you want to switch me? Okay. Chris, I think we might be ready for that music now. Um, Make sure you got a partner A and a partner B. Partner A, wave at me. Partner B, wave at me. All right, A, as soon as you hear the music, start moving around. Partner B, start following that. But with two times the gusto. Are you A? Switch. Good. And switch. And switch. And switch. dates today. <laughs> um, thank you for playing along. Uh, please, please give your partner a very sincere thank you. And remember, the power of improv comes from the power of two, not the wit and wisdom of one. So fear ye not, and we will be back to play in a bit. Yeah.